Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the introduction to the eighth round, the eighth round of Roulette Pan Collab. This is a collaborative project pan that my friend Alexi and I started doing three years ago to the day today. Three years ago we started doing this project together and now it has been a community project pan, a collaborative project for anyone who wants to join in for the past six rounds and it just is so special and amazing to me that so many people get excited about this project, so many people want to join in and participate in this project. And last round of this project, which was back in February, we started a brand new spreadsheet of categories that you can use as prompts to pull the products that you're going to focus on in this project. So we now have 100 categories that you can choose from and that you can pull products based on those categories. And it's just become this really amazing and super special and mind blowing thing all at once to me. And I really have my friend Alexi to thank for all of the fun and all of the emotions that this project definitely holds for me because we've been doing this for three years together. We didn't really know what it was going to become. We didn't even know what our friendship was going to become at the time, but it is just, it's really amazing. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're already familiar with Alexi because I mentioned her in like 90% of my videos because she really is so much inspiration to me. But if you are not familiar with her channel at all yet, definitely go on over there and check her out. I cannot wait to see her introduction to this project. I also just I'm so excited once she gets all sorted in her new house. I'm so excited to see the content that she's going to be creating in the coming months. And yeah, I just, I definitely recommend her. You really need to go and support her because she really is super talented, super creative, and just a really, really kind person. And of course, there are going to be a ton of introductions going up today and in the following days to this project. So those will be in a playlist. I'm going to add those videos to the playlist and I cannot wait to start binge watching all of those videos as well. Definitely check out the playlist. I'll have it linked in my description box. And there is also a hashtag over on Instagram, which is hashtag roulette pan collab. Definitely go check that out. I cannot wait. I just, I know I'm going to say this a million times, but I cannot wait to see everyone's introductions on both platforms. Some people are also doing this over on their own personal blogs or TikToks, other platforms as well. And it's just, it's just become so, so cool. A really cool part of the panning community. And with that in mind, I definitely recommend that you guys join our Discord group. It is called the Panning Club or Discord server rather. It's called the Panning Club. I will have that linked down in my description box as well. It is such a fun place to talk about panning and just makeup consumptions, no buys, talking about like your face of the day, the looks that you're doing. It is a really cool community aspect of this project pan and of the panning community in general. So definitely check that out if you're interested as well and you would just want to chat makeup with people around the world. So let's hop into the specifics of this project pan. It is a rolling style project pan where we pick six products from our collection to focus on. You can set any kind of goals for yourself, whether it's to use up the product, hit pan, number of uses, anything along those lines. And the way that you select the products for this project is from a 100 category spreadsheet. And they are prompts that will tell you, maybe indicate a way that you could pick a product from your collection. So maybe with a color or maybe with a memory or something along those lines. There's so many different categories. And the most special thing about the categories is the fact that they were all chosen by the panning community. We asked a couple rounds ago to get some more ideas for categories so we could like reinvigorate this product project and start over and start fresh a little bit. And we have 100 categories that were chosen by you. And this project runs for four months. It is a rolling style project. So once you hit a goal on a product, you can of course roll something new in by pulling another prompt for this project. And yeah, we do updates once a month and this project will wrap up on the 15th of January, 2021. How's it already almost 2021? 
I am so excited to see what six categories I'm going to be focusing on for the coming months so that I can pull some products from my collection. So how about we do that together right now? I decided from the last round that I'm going to eliminate the categories that I've already used or I've already had. So I'm down to 92 possible categories. So my numbers may be different from what you see in the spreadsheet, but I still have the same category options as you. I just eliminated those lines so now I have 92 available. So let's pick six categories between one and 92 together and yeah, let's just get started. I'm so, so excited. So the first category is going to be 72. Next we have 23. Next up is 19, 84, 74, and 80. So the first category that I selected was 72 and in my spreadsheet that corresponds to a product you think is too pretty to use up. Oh no, okay. I don't know what that will be quite yet, but it's gonna be a toughie. And then number 23 is a favorite product, favorite primer, foundation, bronzer, etc. Okay, I can definitely pick a favorite from my collection. I am working on 20 favorites in 2020 project already, so might be a bit of a challenge, but still, I'm sure I can pick something I love. And number 19 is a product that you forgot was in your collection or you forget you own. Oh, okay, a couple things actually do come to mind, which is funny because you'd think there's things I've forgotten about, but there's definitely things I just forget to reach for in my collection. Number 84 is the next prompt, a glitter, liquid shadow, shadow or pigment. Good, this is so good to reach for. Maybe just use like a usage goal for something like that. Number 74 is an item you think doesn't really suit you. Ooh, okay, okay, it's gonna be a challenge. And number 80, the last category that I'm gonna be working on is your most expensive base product. Oh, okay, okay. Kind of, I feel like these are gonna be tough to pick products for. I don't know what my most expensive base product is, so I'm gonna have to do a little research on that, but I'm so excited to delve into my collection and start pulling some products, so I'll be right back to share with you guys everything I picked for each of these prompts. Okay, I'm back. It's always so hard to pick the initial six products to put into this project. I always kind of flip-flop and feel like potentially I picked the wrong thing. I also have not established any of my goals for any of these products, so I'm feeling a little a little uncertain, but I'm also so excited, so whatever. I've decided after swatching and playing and switching things in and out for different categories and pulling different products and then deciding I didn't want to work on that, whatever. We're here. This is what I'm working on. Uh, let's just get on into all of the products that I chose. So the first category that I selected was a product that is too pretty to use up, so I decided to go for this Melt Highlighter. This is the Digital Dust Highlighter in the shade Stargazer. The shade is very fair and it's very, very blinding. And the reason why I chose this highlighter is because it initially had this amazing embossing that just says like melt in all these different fonts. And at this point now, it definitely does have some wear and tear on it. So it's not as beautiful and pristine as it once was. But when I first bought it, I was always so like, skeptical to use it or like hesitant to use it because I really really did not want to disturb the beauty of this product and I'm happy that I've used it a lot over the past few years but it still is something that I want to like preserve some of the beauty of it. I hope you can tell how gorgeous it is. I'll put in a picture of what it looked like when I first bought it as well. But this formula is gorgeous and I do wanna get more use out of it. It is definitely a highlighter that goes underutilized in my collection. Let me swatch it for you actually. And it is just the most stunning, like very light champagne color. Can you see it right there? Beautiful, beautiful formula, beautiful color, and just a gorgeous, gorgeous pan of products. So I'm excited to reach for this over the next four months. I don't think I'd be able to hit pan on this. I don't think I'll be able to make any sort of discernible progress on it because I am working on other highlighters and other projects that I am going to prioritize over this. But I think, oh, is it gonna break my heart? Maybe what I'll try to do is I'll just try to evenly wear everything so that you no longer can see the beauty of it. <laughs> 
so that we no longer can see any of the embossing so it's all just nice and uniform across the top of the product. I think that's a good enough goal because it will take quite some time to get that worn down. So how about we set that? That'll be something that's a bit more measurable and attainable for sure. And the next category that was selected was number 23 in my spreadsheet, which is a favorite product. And it could be any product that you consider a favorite. So in the lineup, I think it said foundation, primer, etc. I decided to choose my favorite blush because it hasn't been really touched a lot this year. And it is the Essence Satin Touch Blush in the shade Satin Love. I can't get that out for some reason. Essence Satin Touch Blush in the shade Satin Love. There we go. And it is this beautiful, like bronzy, peachy brown, kind of very, very neutral satin finish blush. It is such a beautiful, beautiful blush. And it's one of my absolute favorites in my collection. It doesn't swatch like super special, but there's something so nice about the way that this pairs with any makeup look. And I feel like it makes my complexion look really healthy without looking artificial in any capacity. It is so beautiful. And I have now actually repressed this twice because I took it out of the packaging and it broke when I was trying to like force it out of the packaging. So I repressed it and then I had it in my magnetic palette and one day it just jumped out of there and fell into my vanity and broke again after hitting pan on it. So my goal is going to be to re-hit pan on this again. So I'm going to really focus on this over the next four months. However, I am working on panning one other blush in a, my graveyard project pan. But once that project wraps up, I will be able to focus my efforts on this. I think this will also be beautiful paired underneath of the Luminoso blush. So I'm definitely gonna foresee myself being able to get a ton of use out of this and hopefully hit pan within this project. And my next prompt was number 19, which is a product that you forget you own or a product that you forget is in your collection, some sort of verbiage like that. And the product that I decided was this e.l.f. e.l.f loose powder. This is in the shade Soft Luminance. I think this is the HD powder. And this is a really good indicator of how much I forget that I own this because I had this in a project pan, I believe three years ago. I think so. Um, maybe two years ago, but in any case, it was the Christmas project pan, the 12 pans of Christmas. I think that was three years ago. And I was using it in that project because it's e.l.f. the brand. And um, I have not made any progress on it since it was in that project. It is literally flush with the marking that I had from three years ago. So uh, that's really embarrassing and really a freaking eye opener. Actually, maybe it's the tiniest bit below that line, but I'm gonna use that as my marking line. I don't know that I'd be able to finish this up in four months, but I'm gonna try my absolute best because there isn't a insane amount of product in here. So I'm gonna focus on this. It has this beautiful luminous, finish to it, a little bit of sheen that I think is going to be gorgeous over the winter months. I think it's just going to make my skin look super healthy and glowy without being like artificial or shiny. I don't know if you can even tell there, but it just offers a little bit of glow that is absolutely beautiful. And yet I forget I own it. I forget to reach for it. I love loose setting powders, so I'm shocked that this hasn't really made it into my repertoire over the last little while because I've been really going for more glowy looks and I love loose powders. I always have to set under my eyes, set my concealer. So I think this is gonna be perfect for me. I just forget I own it. So I'm really happy to be reaching for it in this project. The next prompt that I pulled was number 84, which was a glitter, liquid shadow, or pigment. And I decided to pick a liquid eyeshadow. This one is by Stila. This is my Shimmer and Glow Eyeshadow in the shade Vivid Jade. Wow, I can't talk. In the shade Vivid Jade. And this is one of my favorite liquid shadows that I have in my collection because you guys know how much I love greens. So of course I'm obsessed with this color. This formula though, I don't tend to reach for. I forget about my liquid shadows. So I'm really happy I picked this prompt because this is just gonna be an amazing shadow to use over the next few months in the fall time and over the holidays. This is um, just the most beautiful jade, like jewel toned, deep emerald kind of green shade with a shifty kind of shimmer, but it's not super metallic. It is so stunning though, as like an all over the lid shade. I remember wearing this for Christmas 
not last year, the year before last year. So I really do need to get some use out of this because I've owned it now for over two years. And it does have some pretty significant use on it, but it definitely needs a little bit more usage. And I don't think I can finish it in this project. However, I'm gonna set myself a goal of using it 20 times because I think five times a month is an attainable goal. Some months I might not use it five times, some months I might use it you know, seven or eight times, but I don't think it would be realistic for me to set a goal any higher than that. Yeah, 20 uses is what I'm gonna set myself a goal for. Yeah, five times a month. That seems realistic and yet also definitely a challenge because I don't reach for that near that much at this point. I think I maybe reach for it once every six months. So five times a month is a major improvement. And my next prompt was number 74, which is an item that you don't think really suits you. And for me, I feel like there's, I guess, products that don't suit me, but I don't tend to hold on to those or I don't want to necessarily pan them, um, even though obviously that's the idea of this prompt. Like I have a bright orange blush from e.l.f. I don't necessarily think it doesn't suit me. It's just not really my preference on an everyday basis. So it's just not really something that's realistic to pan. But I decided on this lip color, which I've held on to for many years, but I never really feel confident when I wear it. So it is the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in the shade She Bad. This is a matte X formula. And this is just a very, very pale nude lip for me. Very, very pale in my opinion. It looks very, very like not quite concealer lips on my lips, but it definitely doesn't bring a lot of color to my face. And it's not that it's a bad color, I just feel really not myself when I wear this lipstick because it is not as vibrant as I maybe like. Even with my nudes, I do like a little bit of brown, a little bit of peach or pink in them just so, to bring a little bit more life and a little bit more color to my face. But I do remember seeing Sophie Alexandra wearing this. I don't know if she panned it, but I remember seeing her wear it a handful of times, I think last year, and I could not get rid of this lipstick after seeing her wear it because it looked so good on her, and I remember her saying that she loved it. So I can't, I can't seem to part with it, but I never tend to reach for it or try to get any use out of it. There's a lot of products still in here, and I've had this for absolutely years, so I don't think there's any way in heck that I'd be able to finish this up. I suck at panning lipsticks, so that's not even something that's on the table. But I think what I'll do is I'll measure the length of this, and then I will try to set a goal for halfway through this product. But the bullet is very narrow, so I feel like I'll be able to kind of go through this a little bit faster than maybe other lipstick formulas. So I am expecting I can make some decent progress. I'm just not certain because, like I said, it's not something that I'm super comfortable in. And a Matte X formula is not my preferred formula. I do think that it's a nice matte lipstick. It's not too uncomfortable. It's just not, I like more creamy lipsticks these days and more satiny, sheer kind of lipsticks. But I think I can wear this underneath of the majority of my glosses in my collection or even mixed with other lipsticks in my collection and get some serious use out of it. So in the next four months, I'd like to finish up half of what remains here. And the last category I selected was your most expensive base product. And for that, I had to choose my Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow. This is a $65 primer and I compared it to my other primers. I compared it to my other foundations in my collection and nothing else is as expensive as this. This is one of the newer products in my collection, so I was kind of hesitant to put it into this project, but the category dictates what we work on. So $65 is the most pricey thing, hands down, out of everything I own in my collection. This is newer, like I said, and this does contain more than your average primer. This contains 40 mils of product, so I'm not going to expect that I can finish this up. I don't want to even try to finish it up in only four months because I want to rotate through my primers. I want to use other primers for my collection. I don't want to just fixate on the newest one that I own. So should I set a usage goal for this? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should set a usage goal. Mm, I guess I'm gonna have to because I don't really know if it will ever settle enough that I can like do a marking kind of goal. So 
because I have not used it enough to know if it will settle. Do you know what I mean? So I think what I'm going to do is I'd like to use this 30 times, 40 times. Would 40, t yeah, you know what, 40 times because that would give me 10 times a month, 10 of my makeup applications I would use this. I have actually been really enjoying it, using it actually as a mixer kind of product. So I've been mixing it in with my tinted moisturizers to give them a really nice glowy, healthy look. So I think I can use this in combination with foundations, concealers, like any base product, not just exclusively as a primer for those 10 uses per month. And I think using this 40 times in this project will be a really good indicator of how long it's gonna take me to actually get through this product. I don't ever really like count my uses on my base products, but this being a $65 base product and being my most expensive one, I am genuinely curious to see how long it's gonna last me. So yeah, I think what I'll do is 40 uses. I may be able to finish that in two months. I may be able to finish that in all four months. I'm not sure <laughs> it might take me the whole project, but yeah, 40 uses on this I think is good. I am, Nervous and excited because I think that all these products are gonna be long haul products for me. They might take me the full four months of this project. I may not be able to roll anything new into this project based on what I have selected, but I am really excited to work on all these products. I'm really excited to watch everybody's introductions to this project and to just get back into the community aspect of this project pan because I have been missing that for the past couple months. And yeah, that is everything for today's video. Definitely go and check out the playlist. Definitely go and check out everyone on Instagram and check out my friend Alexi as well. If you enjoyed today's introduction as much as I'm kind of scatterbrained today, if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel. I did say this in one of my most recent videos, but I have a loose goal of trying to hit 10K by my birthday, which is November 19th. And I'd love to have you here and be a part of that 10K if you enjoyed today's video and you feel so inclined to be here. No, no stress, you don't want to, but I'd love to have you here. And yeah, that is absolutely everything for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.